Okay, guys, back on the old head, a little more experimentation. This is increasing the height of the short side radius. Real high performance engines usually have the short side radius knocked down, right? They're, they're usually not six degree heads. They're so heavily bent, they need all the help they can get going around that short side radius. So, we're going to see if it made any difference. We're going to take a look at our liquid first. Now, I had a suggestion. Some, somebody said, you know, give that chamber a quick spray of paint. Well, I don't know how that's going to destroy this. I'm better off. What I did is I actually hit the old stuff just lightly with a sand roll to change its texture. So, you can see the new stuff, this triangle right here. And a lot of chunkiness, actually. All right, you can see that splatter. That's new. And you'll be able to see on the bore, if I don't forget to show it to you, the different uh, liquid pattern on, on the bore. We're good as far as going all the way to the roof. It's decently wide. You can certainly see it's it's been straightened up. Now, it's not as much as when I filled the bowl and put that big fin in, right? I did move the fin over a little bit. I aimed it a little more to this direction than it originally was. Because, because of this angle right here, right? That's kind of where I want it. And Tom Muse was saying something about a straight edge. Well, if we go for a straight edge over the short side radius, right, center of the show you this, right, center of the port, just touching the short side out. That's where that's where it wants to exit. Unfortunately, it's kind of shrouded right here. We may want to take a little bit more area out of this. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not paying attention to the camera. We may want to take a little more area out of this. Get it around a little bit better. That's uh, that's an idea. And I appreciate Tom for his help. He's done a lot of development work. Okay, let's take a look down at throat and see what we got. It was actually Tom Muse that wrote in the comments, Don't touch the roof. Increase the short side radius. He was just a little ahead of me. That was the next experiment to come. But remember, I was doing my air speeds and it said the roof was not doing a whole lot and the short side's doing all the work. Well, that hasn't really changed. So we can see, when we look down his throat, I mean, that's the same 19 cc's worth of clay that I've been using. All right, the short side radius, I should measure how tall that is now. Okay, that's what we got on a short side. 1.66 inches tall. I think we were about an inch and a quarter to start with, so that came up quite a bit. That's a lot of area to take up. Okay, doing the best I can with the light, guys. It's, it's not always the easiest. Let me try something different. Okay, hopefully we can see that there. Yeah, that's a lot of clay to put on top of that short side radius. I did fill up the cylinder wall side because remember I put a half inch ball on that wall and I flow went up 5 CFM. That was after the owner said he filled that wall and he got an extra 10 CFM. Okay, which is interesting because it had, to, it had high speed air on there. So... That's a little strange, but you know what's interesting is I keep thinking of of those EQ Magnums I just did and that crazy roof design, right? The roof was real narrow and the short side was real wide. And I keep thinking of that when I'm working on these. Okay, here you can see a good a good change of angle on that liquid going into the chamber. The bowl actually looks quite good. And you can see our short side radius coming in earlier than it was. 
right? It's taller, it takes up more area, gives us a, how should I say that? It changes the arc to the short side radius seat. Now remember, the way we were having the flows, we had a lot more flow this way, right? That gives us our positive swirls. Well, if I made the short side radius more efficient, we should have all positive swirls, right? Let's take a look. Okay, first thing we're going to look at is the swirls. They're all positive. We don't have any reverse, reverse direction anymore. But yet our flow is, uh, our flow, our liquid dicum is showing in the right direction that we want it to go in. So, I don't know the answer. Okay? It's six degree stuff. Haven't worked on six degree stuff before. It is a challenge, but it's not, uh, it's not going to beat me. Too hard headed for that. Almost forgot the bore again. Okay, we got a nice angle this way. We do have more splatter than we've had before. Okay, and we go around quite a bit. Okay, good enough. Okay, let's do our flows. These pluses and minuses are in reference to our filled roof numbers. Don't pay any attention to these pluses and minuses. So it's these numbers versus these numbers. See how we did. Plus, plus, minus, plus, 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 right in the meat. Minus, minus, plus, plus, plus. And some of the pluses are pretty good size. Take a look. I think it, I think it went uh, 380. 380.9 at 0.75. I should have recorded that. Okay. 380 CFM at that lift, which he says he's going to be running 750 lift. That's kind of banging. You know, it's an Oldsmobile motor. It's a torque motor. This is not bad now. Right? Remember, these are no leakage flows. These are no leakage flows. So these are much more accurate than the first couple videos I did on this. As far as our our swirl, remember this had that re reverse, uh, not reversion, I'm sorry guys, reverse direction on the swirl. And the minus is how we would think we want the swirl to go, okay? But notice when we've made that short side radius more efficient, the swirl stayed in that direction. And it was relatively... It was relatively low and built up to a decent amount. You know, not, not as much as I would like to see. How about that? Okay, I think it's enough to get the job done. Especially if you got 500 cubes under it. I think there would be plenty of turbulence to get a good burn out of that. But it's it doesn't change direction. The changing direction, I don't believe, is is going to be helpful. Okay, let's do our pluses and minuses on the, our airspeeds. Okay, our airspeeds are radically different because we changed the port quite a bit. Now, sorry, you know what? I did those pluses and minuses to the wrong one. Let me fix that. Okay, I forgot. I forgot that the airspeeds for the filled roof are on the very bottom of the page. Okay, so that's where we were. That's where we are. Okay, we got a minus at the top of the pushrod pinch. But take a look at what happened to our airspeeds in the other parts of the pinch. Gee, it looks like we could shrink the top of that pinch a lot. And even that out. Kind of like the magnum head. Interesting, right? Okay, as far as our roof speed, 136, 142, 180, 170. Better. 
better speeds on the roof, okay? Can't really complain about that. They're relatively close. I'm good with it. Now our short side radius. I'm sure somebody's going to bark about these, right? That's where we were. 350, 352, very close. Now, this was my first guess where to put the clay, so not completely even from uh, the center of the cylinder to cylinder wall side. And 400 plus everywhere. Why is my speed so high, Charlie? Because we're moving a ton of air across that now. A ton of air. Remember, we've got better flows and increased speeds on the roof and the floor. So what does that tell us? It's a happier port. All right? It's more efficient. We're going for efficiency. So, is this going to work with a 500 cubic inch motor? That's a good question. I, I don't, I don't have the answer for it right now. We would have to, we would have to CC that and do the IOP program and all that. But we have body filler and we can't fill it with the water and get the CCs. So it's a little more of a guessing, a guessing game. Now, with the owner of these heads, he has a very good engine program. He'll be able to take, take all these numbers, right? Put them into his program, subtract 19 cc's right out of it, because we know how much clay it is, because somebody did our calculation for us, and tell and know right away how much power he's going to be able to make on that. The part that got cut from my last video that I had to make a little short because Sophia's busy is comparing these to the non-filled port. Let's do that. Okay, this is really good. I'm glad we did this. I fixed these pluses and minuses in reference to our second cut not filled. Okay, I thought those were pretty good, right? These were no leakage flows, I believe, right? New gaskets, yes. Okay, take a look. Plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, 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 plus. And the pluses are pretty decent. 700, 344, 372. 357, 381. This is a 19cc smaller port, guys. All right, give me your opinion whether that's too small to feed a 500 cubic inch engine. That'd be interesting to see what you guys say about that. And you got to remember, it's kind of clay. It's got my fingerprints all over it. It's a little, a little lumpy and bumpy. But it's such a heavily bent port that it looks like it needs that really high short side radius to get it done. All right, guys. Um, got Rob coming over. We're going to play with some carbs on the bench and some booster designs he's working on for thermal quad stuff so that'll be fun for a couple hours and uh, I've been thinking more and more about that magnum head I, I got that junk magnum head I may may work on only because somebody requested it and uh, like to do that all right guys thanks for hanging out have a good night